Hello everyone, I am Anuranjan Burman and I welcome you to my YouTube channel. During the COVID-19 pandemic, everyone is talking about the vaccine, especially the vaccine for COVID-19. And maybe some of you are curious about how vaccine works. So today I'm going to discuss about the vaccines and different types of vaccines. And in my next video, I'm going to discuss about the working principles of the Covaxin, Covisil, Pfizer, Moderna and Sputnik V. A vaccine is a preparation from an infectious agent and administered into a person to induce immunity against a disease. Suppose you are going to prepare vaccines for SARS-CoV-2 virus which causes COVID-19. For preparation of the vaccine, you have to process the virus in such a way that it cannot cause infection into the human being but it will remain its antigenicity so that it can induce an immune response to the individual. So suppose this vaccine is ready then after preparation of the vaccine it has to be injected into the human being. After preparation of the vaccine the vaccine has to go through some phases before introducing into the public. After completing all the phases and approval, then it can be injected to an individual. After administration of the vaccine, the individual's immune system will start working and it will produce antibody and provide protection. The, that particular virus is trying to attack the individual, then the vaccine will give the protection. Those, the antibodies will give the protection to the individual. In simple word, we can say that the vaccines teach and train our immune system to recognize and fight which the pathogen those entered in our body and can cause diseases. Next, different types of vaccines. Vaccines may be prepared from live modified organisms known as live vaccines or attenuated vaccines, then inactivated or killed vaccines where microorganisms is killed or inactivated. Then the subunit vaccines where some parts of the organism is taken up. Then the toxoid vaccines. Then there is another vaccine called mixed vaccine. Factor based vaccines. And nucleic acid vaccines. Those include DNA vaccine and mRNA vaccines. Next I am going to talk about the live attenuated vaccines. As the name suggests, these vaccines are prepared from live organisms. This contains a weakened version of a living organism. It may be a virus or maybe bacteria which has lost its capacity to cause diseases but it can induce immune response. As this vaccine uses a live organism, so it is close to a natural infection. This will train our immune system how actual pathogen looks like without causing a severe disease. Usually one dose of live vaccine is sufficient to boost your immunity. But the polio vaccine is an exception. It requires three or more doses at a spaced interval to boost the immunity completely. Person with AIDS and immune suppressed patients or a person with blood cancer or other cancer taking chemotherapy, radiotherapy, those person should not take these vaccines. The example of these vaccines are measles and oral polio vaccine. In short, OPV. Next is killed or inactivated vaccine. Killed or inactivated vaccine contains a inactivated or killed organism. Maybe virus or maybe bacteria. Suppose you are taking a live organism and going to prepare an inactivated or killed vaccine. You may inactivate or kill the virus by using either heat or chemical or radiation. They are usually safe but it's less efficacious than the live vaccine. Killed vaccine need two or more doses to produce enough antibody response. The duration for killed or inactivated vaccines may range from months to years. Inactivated or killed vaccines usually administered in the muscle. Example is injectable polio vaccine and Covaxin which is prepared by Bharat Biotech in India. 
and which can give protection against COVID-19. Inactivated or killed vaccines are safe for immunocompromised persons. Next, subunit vaccines. Subunit vaccines contain only a part of the organism. The organism may be virus, may be bacteria. Instead of taking the whole pathogen or the whole organism. Actually, this subunit vaccine contains extracted particles from the virus or bacteria. The example of subunit vaccines, meningococcal vaccine formed from the polysaccharide antigen of the cell wall and the hepatitis B polypeptide vaccine. The subunit vaccines are safe and they have a very high efficacy rate. Next, I am going to talk about the toxoids. Certain organisms produce toxins. For example, diphtheria and tetanus bacilli. Toxins are detoxicated and vaccines can be produced from them. It is called toxoid vaccines. In the case of diphtheria and titani, the organism is not harmful for the human body. But the toxins released from them is harmful. The toxins only causes the diseases. So if we can neutralize the toxins, then we can prevent the disease. Antibodies produced by the immune system after vaccination will neutralize the toxins if there is any real infection. These toxoid vaccines are safe and has high efficacy rate. The example is TT, Titanus toxoid. Next is the mixed vaccine. If the vaccine contains more than one immunizing agent, then it is known as mixed vaccine or combined vaccine. DPT and MMR are example of mixed vaccines. And both these vaccines contains combination of three vaccines. In the case of DPT, the D stands for diphtheria, P stands for pertussis, and the T stands for tetanus. Likewise, in the case of MMR, the first M stands for mumps, and the second M stands for measles, and the R stands for rubella. DPT and MMR are mixed vaccines which has three different vaccines and you will get benefit of three vaccines with a single shot. Next is recombinant vector vaccines. The recombinant vector vaccines use recombinant technology to develop a DNA. The recombinant DNA will have the information for the viral proteins. In the case of SARS-CoV-2 virus, the spike protein and this recombinant DNA is transferred to a viral vector and then it can be injected to a person as a vaccine. After vaccinated with the vector vaccine, the vector with its DNA will reach the host cell. After reaching the host cell, it will use the host cell machinery to produce its protein. First, the Recombinant DNA will enter into the nucleus and it will form an mRNA. The mRNA is sent to the cytoplasm. The ribosome will translate the codes in the mRNA and produce the viral proteins. A piece of processed viral protein will be represented along with the MHC protein to the immune system or the immune cells. Once the MHC will represent the piece of viral protein then our immune cells will be attracted towards that. This immune cell will send some chemical signals and it will attract some other immune cells and there will be some changes in those cells and eventually the antibodies will be produced against that viral protein. Oxford, AstraZeneca and Covicil these are the examples of recombinant vector vaccines which prevent COVID-19. And this is a very new technology. Next is the mRNA vaccine. This vaccine uses a piece of mRNA. And this mRNA will have the information to produce the viral proteins. And this mRNA is covered with a coat of lipid nanoparticles. The mRNA is very fragile. It can be destroyed very easily. That is why it is coated with the lipid nanoparticles and is injected into the individuals as vaccine. The mRNA will use 
host cell machinery to produce the viral proteins. Let's see. After vaccinated with mRNA vaccines, the mRNA along with the nanoparticles will reach the cell and the lipid nanoparticles will be dissolved in the cell membrane and the mRNA alone will enter in the cell. But in this case, the mRNA will not move towards the nucleus. And the mRNA has the codes for the viral proteins. So to synthesize those proteins, the mRNA will move towards the ribosome. Ribosome will do the translation for this mRNA and it will produce the viral proteins. Once the viral proteins are produced from the mRNA, those viral proteins will be processed by the cells, it will be broken down and, and some fragments of the viral protein will be represented on the MHC molecule. Once the virus particles is represented on the MHC, the immune, some immune cells will be attracted and it will interact. After interaction, there will be lots of chemical changes and eventually antibodies will be produced. Once the antibodies are produced, some of the cells will become memory cells and it will keep the information for future reference and it will give protection to the individual. The mRNA vaccines are also very recent technology. The examples of mRNA vaccines are Pfizer, BioNTech and Moderna, which are used against the COVID-19 disease. No matter what type of vaccine you are taking, all have the same goal. It will train the immune system and recognize and respond to bacteria and viruses. So this is all for today. And wait. So in my next video, I'm going to explain the detailed principles of Covaxin, Covishield, Pfizer, Moderna, Sputnik. So if you do not want to miss that video, please stay tuned. And please like, share and comment. And those who are new to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.